The episode begins with a scene showing the Fae homeland devastated by human wars, leading them to endure harsh rule under their rival, the Pact. In the present, fairies are seen escaping from the soldiers of the Pact who shoot at them and employ mythical creatures to pursue them. Vignette Stomas, a strong fae, manages to escape the hunting party and boards a ship preparing to depart, narrowly avoiding cannon fire from the Pact. On the ship, Vignette chats with another passenger while reading a book with a photo of a Burgwish soldier named Rickroft Philistrate, whom she knew from the war and believed to be deceased. That night, a fierce storm causes the ship to sink, claiming the lives of everyone on board. Inspector Rickroft Philistrate, known as Philo, arrives in the beautiful city of the Burg, where humans and mythical creatures live together. However, discrimination against fairies is particularly prevalent, especially from the police force. Philo is there to solve a special mission that is to find those responsible for harming the Fae. Following a series of suspicious deaths in the city, he interviews a recently attacked Fae who provides crucial details about the assailant having a shaved head, mutton chops, a snake tattoo on his arm, and wears a uniform whose origin is uncertain to the victim as she is new in the city. In the Berg's government, two groups are competing for power. Absalom Breakspear leads the ruling party as chancellor. He is worried about rising anti-Fae feelings from the opposing side and is frustrated with their unwillingness to compromise after a heated argument. The news of the capsized migrant ship spreads across the Berg, leading Inspector Philo to suspect it might be linked to recent deaths among the Fae. On the shore, Vignette survives and is taken to the police station for questioning about the ship named Deliverance. Meanwhile, the police are looking for Ezra Spurnrose, the owner of the ship, to determine Vignette's fate. He must decide whether to sell Vignette or keep her working as a servant. So, he decides to keep her as a servant for his sister, Imogen Spurnrose. Inspector Philo attends a gathering of angry Burgish supporters of the anti-Fay movement, led by Ritter Longerbane, Absalom Breakspear's political rival. He notices Sergeant Dami among the members and begins to suspect him or his associates of being responsible for the recent Fay murders. The sergeant takes offense and confronts Philo, leading to a physical altercation. Later that evening, Inspector Philo visits a hotel where Mrs. Fife, the server, serves him dinner. After the meal, they develop a romantic connection. During their time together, Mrs. Fife notices a wound on Philo's back and asks about it. He vaguely attributes it to an old war injury. As their time together comes to an end, Mrs. Fife bids him farewell, leaving the room. On the other hand, Vignette has to get her wings restrained and is dressed in a maid's uniform by Aphissa, another mythical creature working at the Spurnrose's residence. She is obligated to work and unable to leave voluntarily. Vignette inquires about the train route to Tetterby Hotel. Aphissa informs her that the hotel is known for housing girls with ill reputations on the Carnival Row. She explains that wherever Vignette goes, she is a representative of the house and will be closely monitored. Aphissa warns her not to venture anywhere without permission. Despite these restrictions, Vignette persuades Imogen to send her to the Carnival Row to fetch fragrance oil. There, she encounters Tourmaline Laru, an old friend, on a balcony. At the hotel, Vignette and Tourmaline briefly discuss their work and earnings. Vignette shares with Tourmaline the painful memory of being unable to save other fairies from an attack by the pact. Tourmaline comforts her and notices the braid in Vignette's hair, and calls it a widow's braid. It is then that Tourmaline reveals the surprising news to Vignette that Philo is alive. At the station, Philo accuses Sergeant Dami of the fairy murders to their superior, but his accusations are dismissed. He is advised to take a break from work and clear his mind. Frustrated, he storms out of the room. Outside, talking to a colleague, he realizes that a Navy ship docks every three weeks, coinciding with the attacks. He deduces that the culprit wears a sailor's uniform, not a military one. Next door to the Spurnrose's residence, a new neighbor moves in, sparking Imogen's excitement. She persuades her brother to join her in introducing themselves, only to discover the unexpected master of the house is Agrius Astran, a mythical being. Meanwhile, at the Tettery Hotel, Jonah, the Chancellor's son, makes frequent visits. One night, after a playful encounter with a worker, he steps outside at midnight and is attacked by men in the darkness, who then drag him away from the scene. In a pub elsewhere, Inspector Philo corners his target, Jack. When confronted, Jack flees, leading Philo on a chase across rooftops. Cornered at the edge of a building, Jack warns him of a looming darkness beneath their city and speaks of a dark god awakening with dire consequences for those who mistreated the Fae. He claims to have seen something horrifying in the sewers beneath the berg and plunges to his death. After the incident, Philo returns to his apartment where he rejects Mrs. Fife's caring concern. Later that night, Vignette cuts off her widow's braid and leaves the house with a knife. She flies to Philo's location and confronts him in the middle of the night. 
demanding to know why he lied to her. He explains he never meant to hurt her, but she angrily accuses him of ruining her life and causing her seven years of grief. Despite her rage, she cannot bring herself to kill him. She returns to the window, declaring he is not even worth killing and expresses her wish for his demise. On the shore, a fay examines objects on the ground when suddenly a creature hiding in the shadows grabs her, pulling her in and devouring her. The following morning, Philo learns of another fay, Ashling Quirrell lying dead near the sewer. She was attacked the previous night. She was extremely murdered, with a trail of blood leading into the sewer. Realizing Jack couldn't have been responsible due to the timing, Philo dispatches his men to investigate further in the sewers. Philo and Constable Barrick visit Ashling's apartment, where they encounter a peculiar creature named Fike running around. They also discover Ashling's friend, Runyon Millworthy, hiding in a closet. Munyan informs them about Ashling's singing career and his recent return to Berg after a prolonged absence. Frustrated by the police's indifference to Faye's deaths, Runyon expresses his concerns, but Philo reassures him they are determined to uncover the true culprit. On the other hand, Imogen is displeased with their new neighbor as he doesn't sit well with their bourgeoisie class. She and Ezra seek advice from their lawyer, Wigsby, to understand their options, only to realize they have no power in the situation. Meanwhile, the counselor, Absalom Breakspear, learns that his son Jonah has been kidnapped. He vows to punish those responsible once he identifies them. For now, they await the ransom demand. In the park, Imogen finds herself without a parasol when it starts raining. She sends Vinette to retrieve it. As the rain gets thicker, Imogen ends up sharing a parasol with Agrius. They engage in a significant conversation where Agrius reveals he knows details about Imogen, including her apparent addiction to a liquid she keeps in a small flask, the same substance she sent Vignette to fetch from the Carnival Row. Meanwhile, Philo faces resistance in investigating Ashling's murder as nobody seems to care about another Faye's death. Returning to the station, he struggles to find a coroner willing to examine the deceased Faye to determine the cause of death. He seeks out a fawn who works primarily as a butcher due to his marginalized status. From the fawn, Philo discovers that the Fay victim is missing her liver. In Bleakness Keep, Philo visits Darius in his cell. They talk about the recent killing and reminisce about their time fighting together in the Great War, even singing an old battle hymn. Philo makes a point to visit Darius daily. Meanwhile, at the Spurnrose residence, Vignette, working for the Spurnrose narrowly escapes a sexual assault from Ezra. Imogen and Ephissa hear the disturbance and come downstairs, where Ezra accuses Vignette of theft. This prompts Imogen to decide to go to the police the next day. Tignette moves in with Termaline and considers working there to earn her own money. During their conversation, Termaline reveals she used to be a poet laureate and suggests Vignette join a group from their homeland called the Black Raven. She promises to introduce Vignette to them. Agreeing, Termaline takes the initiative to arrange a meeting. Later, Vignette meets Dahlia, the leader of the Black Raven, who sets the ground rules straight away. Dahlia explains the envy normal humans have for magical creatures and demonstrates the seriousness of their cause by executing a traitor in front of Vignette. Eager to fight for her kind, Vignette agrees to join. As her initiation task, Dahlia assigns her to steal a flag directly from the police station. With Jonah still missing, Absalom's wife, Piety Breakspear, turns to an old witch for help. The witch advises them to sacrifice someone close to them to rescue Jonah. They decide to sacrifice their pet bear. By examining the entrails, the witch predicts that the individual holding Jonah is familiar to them and seeks to overthrow them from their position of power, leading the doubt to shift towards Ritter Longspain. Later it turns out Jonah's was not kidnapped by Ritter Longerbane as suspected. Instead, the one behind his disappearance was his own mother, Piety Breakspear, working alongside the old witch who has been loyal to Piety Breakspear's family for a long time. At the station, Philo learns about Imogen's report regarding Vignette. He takes personal responsibility for the case and visits the Spurnrose S house. His aim is to settle Vignette's 50 guilder debt and secure her freedom. Ezra, facing financial ruin due to his mismanagement of the family's wealth, agrees to drop the matter for the money. However, Imogen, driven by prejudice and hostility towards Vignette, insists on pursuing her. Philo pays off Vignette's debt and then questions Ezra, knowing Vignette would not steal. He delves deeper into the situation. After realizing Ezra's reluctance to divulge the truth, he retrieves his money. After some time passes by, Imogen reflects on her action and writes a letter to Agrius. She expresses her regret and extends an invitation to talk whenever it suits him. Aphissa delivers the letter and in response, Agrius invites Imogen to tea the following day. Next, a woman named Mima Blodwin arrives to see Ashling's body 
and insists on performing an anointment ritual. After observing and performing the ritual, she informs Fila that something evil and unnatural was responsible for Ashling's death. Philo, already aware of such occurrences from Jack, listens without surprise. Mima mentions a time when magical creatures, including the Fae, were considered mere legends. Meanwhile, Vignette on the other hand arrives at the police station with a mission from the Black Ravens. Using Tourmaline as a distraction, she swiftly climbs up to remove the flag. However, the police notice her and start to chase her. As she tries to escape, she unexpectedly runs into Philo. She threatens Philo that if he arrests her, she will reveal their past relationship. Therefore, he hesitates to apprehend her, fearing the consequences of their history being exposed. Taking advantage, she escapes through a window. The scene shifts to the Turinese highlands, where soldiers march across a frozen landscape. They arrive at an outpost led by Mima Rusin, the leader of the Turinese Fay of Anon. The soldiers identify themselves as Burgoysemen and claim their arrival as peaceful. Rusin emphasizes that it is a sacred place and instructs them to act accordingly. Nevertheless, she allows the soldiers to take sanctuary there. Later, while Philo explores the keep, he discovers ancient Fey writings preserved there. During this exploration, he encounters Vignette Stomos for the first time. While examining a book, Vignette confronts him with a knife, ready to defend the library at any cost, even threatening his life. Later, Vignette informs Rusin about Philo, and Rusin instructs her to keep a constant watch on him. From then on, he finds himself under her constant scrutiny. Shortly after, the soldiers become aware of an electricity outage. Despite their efforts to resolve it, they struggle to lay a line across the steep valley. They turn to the Fey for assistance and take Vignette's help due to her ability to fly. With precision, she navigates the wire across the massive abyss while soldiers keep watch, ensuring her safety. Once the task is completed, Philo and Vignette engage in conversation. Philo shares his long-standing fascination with a book called Kingdoms of the Moon, a tale of an inventor's romantic adventure in a fictional realm. He allows Vignette to read the book, depicting a narrative of two individuals from different worlds finding love. In the forest, three packed soldiers strip down and inject themselves with a wolf's curse, transforming them into monstrous creatures. Nearby, Vignette and the Berg soldiers hear the eerie howling. Philo questions if wolves inhabit the area, but Vignette dismisses the possibility. Gunshots ring out from across the ravine, prompting Philo to investigate. He arrives to find his men and horses brutally slaughtered, and faces a terrifying wolf that nearly kills him. Philo manages to shoot one wolf, but is attacked again by another. This time, Vignette intervenes, stabbing the wolf from behind and saving Philo. Shortly after, Darius joins them. The three of them then witness the creature transform back from wolf to a man right before their eyes. Philo recounts the incident, showing the serum the guards used to transform into monstrous beasts to his superior. The superior warns that the pact will go to any lengths to seize the land and its resources, then departs from the scene. The next day, Vignette flies to Fila to return the book over his lunch and expresses her appreciation for letting her read it. Philo insists on keeping the book for their library. Captivated by his action, Vignette invites him to visit the library with her. There, she shows him the vast collection of holy texts, maps, and scientific research. She selects a book that had initially caught Philo's attention and recounts an ancient tale about a fey queen who fell in love with a human, resulting in a half-blood son. This narrative mirrors the themes and ideas found in the book Philo had lent her. As they talk, Philo learns more about Vignette and her fey heritage. Eventually, they start meeting in secret and share intimate moments. During their time together, Vignette explains the significance of fey braids, including how one part represents her lineage and another her birthday. The third part is gifted to a cherished lover among the fey. She notices a scar on Philo's back, and he reveals it is from his childhood, though he can't recall how he got it because he was too young at the time. Later that evening, Philo engages in conversation with one of the Fae when he notices Darius rushing towards the woods. Curious, he follows Darius and discovers that Darius himself transforms into a wolf under the influence of a curse. As the full moon ascends into the sky, Darius undergoes the transformation. His body changes into that of a wolf. Philo watches silently from a distance, and the wolf escapes into the darkness of the woods. The following morning, Philo discovers Darius next to a slaughtered elk near a lake and goes to confront him. Darius admits the truth about his transformation into a wolf and assures Philo that he has it managed. He also reveals his ability to sense the presence of Fae signifying Philo's relation with Vignette. Despite their shared secrets, they both harbor a mutual desire to protect each other. At the keep, a group of injured fairies arrives, including Tourmaline, who were attacked by the pact. Many fairies were killed, shot down while flying. Tourmaline views both the Berg and the pact as imperialists. It becomes evident that Tourmaline and Vignette had a romantic relationship in the past, 
Kermeline is uncomfortable hearing about Vignette's new relationship with a Burgwish soldier. She urges Vignette to think about the future after the Great War, when they will have to go back to their respective worlds. This makes Vignette ponder the implications of returning to their separate lives after the war ends. Later that night, Vignette confronts Philo about their future after the war. Philo admits he hasn't thought much about it. During their conversation, Philo reveals a secret about his scars that they are remnants from the wings he once had as a child, which he believes were later removed. He has always felt like he existed in between worlds, never fully fitting in with either magical beings or humans in the Berg. The following day, as Termaline prepares to leave, she persuades Philo to end his relationship with Vignette, especially with the Berg losing the war. This influences Philo to make a difficult decision to fake his own death to protect Vignette, believing it's the best way to keep her safe and prevent her from risking her life for him. As packed airships approach Anon, ferries evacuate while Rusin instructs Vignette to secure the library. Philo urges Vignette to leave, but she insists on staying together. She gives him a braid from her hair as a token of their love before heading to seal the library. After sealing the library, Vignette waits anxiously amidst the chaos of gunfire and explosions from the approaching ships of the Pact. She witnesses Fairy's flyers retaliating fiercely with Molotov cocktails against the advancing enemy forces. Philo, caught in the midst of the chaotic destruction, decides to have Mima inform Vignette that he has been killed, which devastates her deeply. In the present, Philo seeks out Vignette to explain his actions, expressing that everything he did was to protect her. He acknowledges his own sense of brokenness. Vignette, saddened by the loss of what they once shared, silently departs, leaving Philo behind as she flies away. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave 1000 likes or 100 comments if you'd like us to continue part 2. Thank you.